Alright fuckers, welcome back to Son of Squall and then to bring you some more Total Extreme Wrestling. This is episode 9. It's our first pay-per-view from Ring of Honor in the whole series and I think this show's it's looking good guys. It's the show names R O ROH January. I should probably should have renamed it, but we'll we'll just go with that for now. And the only absent workers we've got is Miss Chief for tonight, so but she's gonna be out for a while. So anyway, we've got the whole roster available. Which is great, but the bad news is we haven't had them for the past three weeks, so it's been impossible to build the feuds that I want. And the people that haven't be, have been absent obviously can't be in feuds. And the matches that they're in tonight are just going to feel out of place and as if they've been randomised. And to be honest, I guess they kind of have because they haven't been here, I haven't been able to book them up, so I haven't been able to build them. So there's not a lot I can do. But this show is looking like it's going to be a great show. I think this might be the best show of the series so far. I'm anticipating a good rating and with that said let's get straight into the show. I've already booked it so we'll just have to run it hopefully we can come out with a good rating. So the first pre-show of the match it was extremely poor actually. Cedric Alexander defeated BJ Whitmore in 9 minutes 10 seconds by pinfall. Yeah, Cedric Alexander is improving in performance skills. Got 32 E+. Not too bad, it's only the pre-show. Pardon me guys. And then the second pre-show match, in an absolutely... Fuck's sake, what? Sorry. In an absolutely wretched bout that was devoid of action or heat, Taylor Hendricks defeated Scarlett Bordeaux, Bordeaux and Mandy Leon in 7 minutes 13 when Taylor Hendricks defeated Scarlett by pinfall of a peacemaker. And you can see fans ain't happy and this brought the match, this match brought the crowd's mood down. Fuck the f like I've said, I mean, the better start getting used to it because we're going to see women competing more often here at Ring of Honor and if the fans ain't happy with that then just don't come. Eh, uh, well, see, I mean, keep coming but you know what I mean. <laughs> Fuck it guys, this theory is bad enough without me getting low attendance ratings and people tuning out. Fuck that. Anyway, Taylor Hendricks is improving performance skills and Scarlett is improving in technical and performance skills. Moving on to the main show. So we kick off the show and it's an extremely poor match. God damn it. Adam Page defeated Michael Elgin in 7.45 by submission. Michael Elgin was really off his game tonight. Adam Page is improving in performance skills. A 28E. So I actually done worse than the first pre-show match of the night. Eh, not a good start to the show. I was expecting better. Ah, next up we then the, the Jackson brothers. And uh, they are cutting a promo, putting themselves over without tonight's tag team's title shot and this got 49D+, plus. happy with that. I need you guys on TV every week when to, if you can get me ratings like that so uh, tell New Japan Pro Wrestling to go and fuck themselves. I need you here at Ring of Honor week in, week out. Moving on. And about that solid ring action but not much we have heat the world's cutest tag team defeated. Uh, Roponi face the Kingdom and Red Dragon in 11 minutes 6 seconds when Joey Ryan defeated Rocky Romero by pinfall with a roll up. Adam Cole seemed off his game tonight. Joey Ryan was really off his game tonight. Candice LeRae seemed off her game tonight. Well, I can't really blame Candice for being off when she's got all these uh, fucking fans giving her a hard time like it's a joke and uh, Adam Cole came out of the match looking good well. I'm glad for Adam Cole. I think that's twice we've put them actually, did he not compete in the first match? I think he did, but anyway, I'm sure he can handle it. Adam Cole's improving. And uh, you can see a whole bunch of improvements here actually, so... I'll ha I'm happy with that 42D. Moving on. And about a solid ring action, but not much of heat. Moose defeated ACH in 7 minutes 9 seconds by submission. And uh, nobody's improving, it's got 35E+. Plus. Now guys, like I say, is that this, the first half of this pay-per-view might not be that good, but I'm really relying on the second half to get us the good rating, and I think it will. Anyway, moving on. Aha. And a match that had good in-ring action and average heat, Roderick Strong defeated King and King in 17 minutes, 15 seconds by pinfall with a death by Roderick. Roderick Strong makes defence number four of his Ring of Honor television title, and he got a 52D+. Plus. So if you remember, last week on Ring of Honor, Roderick Strong defeated Kenny King, offered him the handshake, Kenny King didn't accept it, 
kind of led to this match tonight. Roderick Strong wasn't happy. He wanted to teach Kenny King a lesson, give him a rematch, beat his ass, and he has done that. He's retained his title. Roderick Strong is improving in performance skills. Kenny King is improving in technical skills. Yeah, 52 D plus. Happy with that. We have a video, Aaron showing AJ Styles. 53 C minus. Best rating of the night. Happy day. So let's keep it going, guys. Ah, really? I was expecting better than that. It really was. And a match that average crowd reaction and some decent in ring action. The Addiction defeated the Briscoe Brothers in 15 minutes, 2 seconds. When Dan Christopher Daniels uh, defeated Jay Briscoe by pinfall with our last rights. Frankie Cassidy and Christopher Daniels showed excellent chemistry. As did the Briscoe Brothers. The storyline has advanced. 46D. But with uh, the Addiction becoming the new number one contenders. This wasn't a more contender match, by the way, so with them. I don't know if this storyline is going to advance, to be honest. Probably not. I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, the ratings haven't been that great, so I might just uh, pull this thing, actually. Anyway, moving on. I think it's a bar. Uh, are you sure? I thought he would have. Yeah, same for Mike Briscoe. Yeah, disappointing. After the match, Christopher Daniels and Frankie Kassarian celebrate the ring. They take the celebration way too far, healing it up and going entirely overboard. Well, that's what heels do, isn't it, guys? I mean, I got a 52D better than the actual match. Happy with that. Really? Fuck. And a match had some good action and average heat. Shinisuke Nakamura defeated Matt Sedal in 12 minutes, 6 seconds with a bomb. Yay. And, uh, Need to improve here, no road agent reports. 43D, and if I'm being honest, I expected this to get in the 50s. Or maybe even 60s, I don't know why I was expecting that anyway. 43D rating. Poor, very poor. Next up, with Nigel McGuinness hosts his interview segment in the ring with great guest Jay Lethal. Probably been more backstage than in the ring. And um, Jay Lethal did a masterful job of improvising interactions with the crowd. I believe I let him go off script and uh that may have helped. We got a 47D rating. Jay Lethal's a bit pissed at me at the moment, so hopefully that changes the mood. And about that solid ring action, average heat the Young Bucks defeat at War Machine in 14 minutes 06 when Raymond Rowe was disqualified while fighting Matt Jackson. Uh, the performance of the Jacksons stood out as being good tonight and they showed excellent commentary. Co co chemistry? Commentary, what the fuck's that word? Uh, anyway, chemistry. 53C minus. So, title's on the line, but sadly, the Young Bucks do not win the titles as it was a win by DQ. See, Hansen improving performance skills and uh, Rose improving in Rumble technical and performance skills. 53C minus, that's our joint best rating of the night. Moving on. Chris, oh for fuck's sake, really? Chris Sabin is showing warming up backstage, got 29E. Not good. Not good at all, fucking hell, what, what's happening here? Alright, moving on. I think we need someone here to save us. Someone phenomenal. Yes! And a match that had good action and average heat. AJ Styles defeated Delirious, or Delirious in 18 minutes 48 by pinfall with a Styles Clash. And this got a 67C+. Plus. Get it fucking right up ye. This is the kind of match I've been wanting. kind of match I've been needing, to be honest. And finally, it came... Thanks to AJ Styles and maybe this delirious guy too, give him some credit. Could pass a CM Punk with that mask on for about uh, 09, 2010, but we know it's not. Anyway, this match lifted the crowd. AJ Styles improve, improving in performance skills and uh, Delirious is improving in rumble skills and performance skills for 67C+. Plus. There's no way that's going to be beat tonight, but I'm happy with that. Moving on. Video airs hyping Chris Saban and Jay Lethal. Basically just a quick advertising promo showing their showing them their, their history, their rivalry, even though they're not uh, they are in a rivalry. Anyway, showing the rivalry and uh, moving on to the main event, what we're gonna get. I'm hoping it's in the fifties, I'd be disappointed if it was not. Just just fucking made it. <laughs> in a match had average crowd reaction and some decent angling action, Jay Lethal defeated Chris Saban in fifteen minutes forty by pinfall with a lethal uh, a lethal fucking can't speak tonight, man. And with a lethal combination, Jay Lethal makes defense number one of his Ring of Honor world title. Jay Lethal was physically tiring towards the end, as was Chris Sabin. The world title feud story has advanced. Whether it's going to advance 
anymore. I don't really know Jay Lethal's improvement performance skills. And there you go, so decent match, 50 D+. Plus. And for the whole overall pay-per-view, um, I, I think we'll be lucky if we get in the 50s, but I really, really do. I'm going to say a 48, I hope I'm wrong. Anyway, let's find out what we got. 52 D+. Plus. You know what, guys? Before, I have a sixer. I was probably expect, I was hoping to get better than that, but seeing what the actual individual ratings were, I wasn't expecting to get that high. I was expecting it to be, you know, probably high 40s at best. So to get a 52 D+, plus, I'm happy with that. I believe that's the best Ring of Honor show we've put on. But it is the pay-per-view, so you would expect to do better at the pay-per-view. I'm going to make a speech now, and we're going to see who deserves the praise. The young buck, uh, the young bucks. I think deserve praise. And AJ Styles, sorry, Delirious. I know you were part of that match, but I mean, I think these three just. I think I've got a. Uh, where the fuck can you get Styles' name here? Where, where the fuck is it? Come on, AJ. Where are you? I hear you here. So in the next Nick Jackson and Matt Jackson, and uh, let's see what kind of. Ah, Jesus. Right, let's see what kind of. Um, we can give them. Hmm. I think we'll give them compliment on a good performance. I'm going to praise AJ Styles for it. Let's see what they say. AJ Styles, Stephen, please. Nick Jackson, seem please. Matt Jackson, seem please. They're pleased. I'm pleased. Everybody seems fucking pleased. Anyway, guys, as you can see, that Ring of Honor pay per view was our best show by, you know, quite a considerable margin. So, but again, you would expect that. But you know, it's nice to see us make an improvement. Also, let's see if yeah, well, obviously, I think you could expect that. So, you can see that AJ Styles defeating Delirious is our best match that we've had and. Could be a very long time before that's beaten, I tell you that. Still Roderick Strong taking on Michael Elgin. I think that was in our first week. Still the second highest rated match. Now you can see... Yeah, you actually got four matches in that pay-per-view. In our top five matches of the four events that we've had already. So that's very good. It kind of shows you there was quality in that pay-per-view. It's just the other matches did let the show down. Some of the segments let the show down, so... We're going to have to, um, definitely going to have to try and improve that. And you see, we seem to sell it every time, which is good. Maybe we should look about, in the future, maybe trying to go to no more higher arenas and money. I don't think we didn't. Did we get any money? Let's just have a quick look here. Income. Ticket sales, but holy shit, we lost. So workers, I mean, show cost a lot. We got must have uh, people on some big contracts or something like that. Like with TNA, we actually. Oh well, well, you can see. These guys have actually got a huge. Um, you know, they're making quite a lot actually. So, but. I can't really complain because the guys that are getting paid good here are good. <laughs> they generally are good, yeah. And uh, Nigel McGuinness, I use him for a lot. I use him for commentary. I use him for uh, the road agent. I use him for interviewing guests and shit like that. So I definitely get my money out of my, uh, Nigel McGuinness. But I am looking to bring someone in. Maybe a new road agent. Maybe a new personality to um, to do interviews and shit like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a quick look here, try and sign a couple of people and I'll be back here for these in a little second. Alright guys, as you can see I've put a couple of people on the short list. First of all I'm going to try and sign Bob Backland and um, I'm hoping that we can get him as a personality, just someone like 
to do in a few segments and things like that, his mic skills should be decent. So we'll see here. I'm gonna see if we can get him. Hmm, what do you want to give him? Six months. And we'll give him 1500 a show, I think. And it will be exclusively as a personality. So you're going to get back to us, and then the second person, Lance Storm. If I can be serious for a minute, I think Lance Storm would make a great road agent. And that's what we're going to try and get him as. Contract, give you six months also. Just in case it doesn't work, you know, just try them out first. And um, yeah, it's good enough to me. We'll offer him that, you'll get back to us. So we should know guys for the next show whether or not they're going to be part of Ring of Honor going forward. But for this episode guys, that's going to do it. We had an success successful uh, pay-per-view, so yeah, hopefully we can follow that up on the next show. Next time out it will be TNA Impact, then it will be back to being Ring of Honor. And then, uh, you know the drill guys, so at least you should until then. So if you have any advice or any thoughts on the pay-per-view, let me know down below. Let me know how you thought it went. Let me know if you thought there was any improvements I could make. That's going to do it, guys. Until next time, I'm Sir Scotland 90. Peace.